Hello everyone and welcome back. So what we are going to do today with master data services, we are going to now look at the business logic, how we can create the rules and how we can apply those rules using the, the master data services because most of the time, once we collect the data uh, in, 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 the, in, in the master data services or any model, even if we have created a custom model in the, in the database, we need to apply the business logic that evaluate the, the rules uh, and uh, apply those rules on, on the records which are stored in the, in the table. And then obviously filter out those records which are not, uh, not uh, uh, complying with with the with the rules that business has provided and uh, keep in mind that that's one of the most challenging uh, area in the in the data uh, uh, analytics uh, at the moment because most of the time we spend to to clean and and massage the data to prepare the data and then we feed that data either into machine learning algorithms or into our uh, live dashboard so business can get the value out of it so now today what we are going to see that if, if we have uh, the master data services configured and we are using the uh, the the data from the uh, master data services. So how we can uh, leverage the business to to apply the business rules without consulting the IT to apply those rules by uh, 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 by running the, the the scripts in the in the uh, in the database environment. That will not only segregate the duties, but that will also uh, give the opportunity to business to control the 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 uh, uh, their whole uh, business side of, of the data uh, and take the ownership because that will help us that, uh, to to assure that whatever we uh, da whatever data we are getting out of these master data services model that data is already qualified because uh, the rule has already been applied on 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 these these uh, 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 tables or entities and we can use this. Uh, these tables because the entity which you are going to see in the in the MVS model in the backend that entity will uh, available to us as a as a uh, as a table format that we can utilize into our uh, logical conceptual or even physical uh, uh, data model. Right. So let's go and let's start our journey by creating uh, one simple rule and we are going to apply that rule on our product table and we'll see how it's going to work. All right, so if you want to create any business rule or any business logic, uh, we need to go to, to the system administration and you need to select the model. And if we select the model, we're gonna see the entities has been highlighted. So let's hit the entity now. So in the entities, uh, you can see we have uh, plenty of uh, tabs available, which are grayed out because we haven't selected the entity at the moment. So you can see we have plenty of entities in, in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the product entity and you can see as soon as I uh, highlighted the, the entity, all the tabs are uh, activated. We're gonna see at, uh, in this video because we are interested into the business rule, rules. So let's go and click on the business rule and you can see that we have already created a rule. So as soon as I have created, uh, I selected the, the, the rule, the edit button has been activated. So if I want, I can change that rule. Now let, let's uh, look at this rule that what I've already created. So just give you an idea. So you can see product size the check. So I'm actually checking the product size and what I'm going to check because I need the product size and if the product size is not there, I need to put a proper value. So once I use that data on my dashboard or at least if I want to report that data, I can show the business that, okay, these many records are not coming without uh, uh, with the proper product size because I do believe in this scenario, uh, that product size is critical and it is required to uh, to uh, you know to build a, a useful dashboard for, for my business right so what i'm going to do the very first thing i'm going to give it a name so i just uh, call it product size check we can call it product size rule and i can see blank rule blank or invalid value Rule, right? Uh, and then the description is checking the product size value is available or not. Available or 
it is not an invalid value right so that the, that's a quick description you can put any description with uh, whatever you like after giving the description uh, we have the opportunity to send a notification and that notification goes to the user if we want to inform people that if there is uh, there's a group that we need to notify about the 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 uh, the validation rule that whether uh, uh, these are the, the records which are not qualified. So we can check this option. And by the way, you can select the, the group and that group, uh, if you remember in the last videos we have created uh, just to, uh, to, uh, 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 to group the user which are relevant to, to finance and group the, uh, the, the sales people. So that instead of sending everyone individually, they, that, that's where the whole groups comes into the picture. And by the way, we can utilize, so anyway, I'm just using the local group, but we can also send it to, to, to the Active Directory group. And I would uh, normally prefer to utilize the Active Directory group because the, over there, we have a centralized control and we can uh, you know manage the security efficiently. But in this case, because I'm not connected to, to the, to the uh, a mail system and it's not uh, my server is not part of a proper network so i'm not sending any notification but we can send a notification accordingly right now excluded i'm going to come back later but now what i'm going to show you that that's the after the excluded uh, we have the main area that we can use to define any rule so in this case if you can see i've already defined two rule so let me show it to you uh, the, that the uh, very first rule that I have defined and I can, uh, if you right click, you can click edit. Even you know what I'm going to do. Let me just delete these two so I can show you from the scratch. All right. So you can see we have the add button and we have the operator. So these operators are the same, which is available to in, in to any language, uh, these are the logical operator which uh, combine the condition and based on the condition result, they will evaluate the the, uh, the results, right? And that result tells the uh, then and else part that whether this condition is going to be executed or not. So the concept is very famous. If we are using end operator, then all condition needs to be true or all condition needs to be valid uh, to run the, the part which has been mentioned after then. If we want to execute based on any of the condition to uh, be true, and we need to run the then part, then we need to uh, use or uh, operator, which is obviously opposite to the end. And obviously not will, whatever the result is, if we apply the not operator, it will change the result. So if we are getting the uh, true result as part of our expression that we are going to build and at the end we apply the not, that will reverse the, 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 the result and it will uh, execute the, the reverse part. So if, for example, if the actual condition is subjected to execute the, the part which is mentioned after then, if we apply not, that it will execute whatever is we have mentioned in the else part. So that, that's the whole concept of using not operator, right? So let's define the condition. So I'm going to do, but obviously, so as soon as I click add, you're going to see we have the create condition dialog box. And it is obviously showing us all the attributes. So if you can sh uh, see in here, we have name, code, product category, ID. So all these, these uh, uh, attributes which are part of the product entity, they are displayed, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm selecting the product size because that's the attribute which I'm interested in. And I'm going to say that, okay, if it is blank, let me see. So it's blank, I need to select from the value perspective. All right, so I'm going to use the equal operator and I'm just going to say if it is equal to blank, Theoretically, it should be part of operator, but anyway, if they didn't apply that way, Microsoft have its own uh, rules, so we can stick to that, right? So my first condition, if my product size is equal to blank, that means it's not a valid value, I need to flag it out. What, how I'm going to flag it out? That's a separate question, but let's first define the condition, right? In a normal programming environment, we first define the condition. Now you can see all is selected. I can even select the... Uh, I can even select the end or uh, not operator, but in this case, I'm going to stick to all and hit add again to define another condition, which is again on the product size. And what I'm going to tell that, okay, if the product value, product size value is, 
U N K N O. Uh, and I can quickly go back and check it from my database table. Let me quickly see. U N K N O. So that there's an incorrect value that for somehow has been played, right? So if because that's uh, not even unknown, and uh, I have if I want to put the unknown, I need to apply a proper uh, phrase. So once I display it on my report or dashboard, at least I can separate out the number of records which are with either blank or without the the proper product size separately from the from the valid product size records, right? So I'm just going to put so any of these conditions are true. So now you can see the logic of the OR operator either of the condition two is going to execute the then uh, part. So now what we are going to do the then part. So you can see I've already placed the, the condition. Let me just show it to you. So what I'm going to say, uh, set the value of product size, which is equal to going to be, and I'm selecting the attribute value. By the way, we can select, we can assign an other attribute value. If we want to do it, we're going to see it in the, in the, upcoming video or we can even set it to the blank but that that's not the rule that we are applying so i'm just going to say yeah apply the attribute value and what attribute value we are going to set in this case unknown and you can see there is a proper phrase that we i'm using because once i build a report i'll show it back to the business so business can understand okay these are the records that needs to be fixed to to uh, to uh, to improve the analysis right so let me just save it and obviously in else, so if these two conditions are false, because remember, else in the or condition only execute if all the conditions uh, generate false results, right? So for example, I got a record where product size is neither blank nor it has equal to U and K and O. So that means it's going to execute my else. So in other words, in that case, my uh, product size is available. So all I'm going to do I'm just going to assign my product size. So you can see in this case, I have selected the attribute. So whatever the attribute size is, in this rule, I'm just going to keep it as it is. So you can see I'm just uh, assigning it uh, uh, the, the product size, right? So let me just save it. Save it now. So you can see everything is done. So changes pending means that we haven't actually applied it. So what are we gonna do? Let me see if I can publish. Yeah, I want to publish this. Yeah, now it's active, sorry. Uh, it has nothing to do with, with the application. Uh, so once you uh, change your business rule or create your business, make sure your business rule is active, right? And we have the publish all that will allow us to, to publish our uh, business rule, right? Now this business rule is available. In the second step, we are going to apply this business rule to uh, to our uh, main table. Uh, so uh, in the next video, we're going to do it. If you have any question, please feel free to put your comments, more than happy to, to answer. But uh, we're going to actually start with a very simple business rule and we're going to create some really complex business logic. And you will see how we can give the control back to the business to handle the master data with all the, all the business rule at their end. And we are in the backend are going to get the clean data that we can use for our data or analytical activities. So hopefully it makes sense. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.